Ten years ago, more or less all European trading was concentrated to, to the national exchanges. There were some attempts to break this monopoly. Uh, we remember names like Eastac, TradePoint and Jaiway. Uh, none of these uh, initiatives were successful. It required a new uh, legislation to break this monopoly and get change in Europe. Uh, and this legislation was obviously MIFID I. And two important tools to, uh, to facilitate this was the introduction of the new venue type called the MTFs and together with the uh, new best execution requirements. Uh, the way that MTFs attracted order flow was, uh, for example, paying for order flow uh, by this uh, make-it-take-it model. Uh, and we should also remember that uh, during the first years it was possible to have tighter spreads on the MTFs, uh, since they could use another tick size table than the primary market. In the beginning, uh, the fragmentation started to take off very, very slowly. So uh, many sell-side firms only uh, thought about uh, implementing a, a smart router. But uh, only a few years after uh, implementation of MIFID, uh, a third of the volume was traded outside the primary market. And by this time, it uh, was not uh, uh, sufficient to just think about implementing a smart router. You had to actually do it. Today we are eight or nine years after MIFID 1, and uh, the evolution has been very fast, obviously, of smarter routers. Uh, the first generation of smart routers were quite basic, concentrating on getting the best price for aggressive orders. Uh, fragmentation led to arbitrage opportunities and we saw a, a new type of uh, participants on the market, now called the high frequency traders. And uh, uh, the introduction of, of high frequency trading led to better uh, price discovery and more liquidity on the market. But on the other hand, it uh, also led to uh, an explosion in market data volumes. And that led to uh, massive capacity problems, uh, both in the smarter routers and in, in the cell side uh, trading systems. So the second uh, generation of smarter routers concentrating on, on uh, capacity, being able to handle this massive order flow and, and the market data flow. There are studies saying that over 10% of trading is done in the dark today in Europe and uh, that makes it essential to be able to handle dark trading in your smart router. And some keywords are alternative cost, information leakage and speed. And speed uh, is uh, a necessity since there are around 10 different dark pools to access today. And now looking forward into 2018 looking for the next generation of smart routers, where what can we find? Everyone can agree that MIFID 2 will uh, introduce a completely new market structure. And I would say that the main driver for the changed market structure is the double volume caps. Uh, the double volume caps will cap the dark pool trading and the usage of the negotiated trade waiver to 8% per instrument. And uh, as I said before, more than 10% of trading is, is done in the dark today. So uh, liquidity will, will find another way uh, when the caps are hit. So we will see new types of trading, for example, uh, the large scale trading in uh, dark pool, like turquoise block. And we will also see uh, alternative trading models like BATS periodic auction. And the caps are also affecting the negotiated trade uh, waiver, so we will probably see a proliferation of systematic internalizers. And all in all, this will lead to uh, an increased complexity on the market. So it's even more important to have functionality and speed in your smarter router. Uh, when it comes to MIFID 2, uh, you will not be uh, able to wait and see as you perhaps could in MIFID 1. Uh, statistics uh, shows that around 70% of the blue chip stocks will be subject to the double volume caps from day one. Uh, so it will be too late to address uh, these uh, requirements in 2018. You have to start today.